Hello friends, welcome to the fourth episode in my series on serotonin. Today I will be telling you guys about the power of serotonergic activity to inhibit the addiction process and to reduce addictive behavior in both mammals and specifically humans. So I'm going to go through some of my notes that I just jotted down before I uh, turn the camera on with you and I, I want you guys to pay attention to this incredible power of serotonin to reduce addictive behavior and mainly this is governed by the relationship that serotonin has with mesolimbic uh, dopaminergic neurons so there's sort of an inhibitory effect of serotonergic activity on the mesolimbic dopaminergic neurons dopaminergic neurons are neurons that produce dopamine and dopamine is the neurotransmitter most uh, involved in the process of habituation and addiction in people, which is why there is a slang word called dope, and why drug addicts used to be called dope heads, and why drugs were once called dope. So anyway, let's get into it. So basically this all began in the 1970s, when it was noted that if rodents were able to self-stimulate their RAF nuclei neurons, which are the serotonergic neurons, the serotonin producing neurons, that they would stimulate these neurons electrically, which would cause them to experience pleasure. So this was the first time that it was associated that uh, it was known that serotonin somehow affected hedonic reward. Hedonic meaning he from the word hedonism, which means uh, immediate pleasure, essentially. So essentially they would self-stimulate and this basically what, what they realized is that the serotonergic neurons in the RAF nuclei innervated the limbic corticostriatal circuit which is involved in he the hedonic reward system because they would self-stimulate these things. Later it was discovered in monkeys that the RAF nuclei coded information about rewards and affected goal-seeking behavior uh, in monkeys as well. In knockout studies in mice, knocking out the 5-HT1B receptor, what happens is mice self-administer cocaine and ethanol more, the knockout mice that lack this gene. When the 5-HT1A receptor is agonized, uh, it's very interesting actually, when the 5-HT1A receptor that is located presynaptically, if you recall there's two neurons, serotonin is being signaled from one to the other, the one that's signaling it, if the receptor of 5-HT1A, you guys will remember 5-HT1A is that receptor that is also an autoreceptor, which means it senses serotonin in the presynaptic uh, neuron and therefore sends a signal to the body to synthesize less serotonin. So it actually, agonism of that receptor, the 5-HT1A autoreceptor in the presynaptic neuron can reduce synthesis of serotonin. So it can overall reduce serotonergic activity. So what was noted is that presynaptic 5-HT1A uh, receptors would increase addictive behavior when they're agonized. Whereas the postsynaptic ones that don't reduce serotonin, when they're agonized, they decrease uh, addictive behavior. So this relationship became, started to become clear that the serotonergic receptors when they are agonized uh, in a way that increases serotonergic activity, addictive behavior decreases. So the next thing is that, so I wanted to mention the 5-HT1A and 5-HT1C receptors. Both of these, when agonized, reduce cocaine self-administration in rodents. The 5-HT1B receptor does the opposite. When it's agonized, addictive behavior increases. The 5-HT2A receptor doesn't seem to influence uh, to, I don't know if I said this, 5-HT2A receptor, uh, unlike the 5-HT1A and 5-HT1C, when it's agonized, doesn't seem to increase addictive behavior or decrease it, but when it's antagonized, it appears to um, re uh, suppress addictive behavior. Sorry, my notes are a bit messy because I read the, wrote them very quickly before the, the video. <laughs> anyway, so um, the next thing I want to talk about is cocaine analogs. So it appears that in rodents, the more a cocaine analog binds to CERT, that is the serotonin transporter, which basically means the more a cocaine analog acts like an SSRI, the less addictive behavior the rodents will display. So 
which is pretty interesting. That gives you the idea that SSRIs may reduce addictive behavior. Well, they, they do actually. So in rats, the depletion of forebrain serotonin increases cocaine self-administration, which means if they have less serotonin in their forebrain, they want to use cocaine more. Cocaine is mainly a dopaminergic drug. And so it's a very representative of addiction, of non, uh, of non, like a not dependency, but a, of addiction. So also in rats, fluoxetine, which is also called Prozac, which is one of the SSRIs with the highest affinity for the CERT transporter, and tryptophan both decrease addictive behavior and specifically cocaine self-administration. So less serotonin than your forebrain, more cocaine. Take fluvoxamine or tryptophan in your diet, less cocaine. The, the relationship is being established. In humans, tryptophan depletion increases the value of cocaine, which means that people are, have lower serotonergic activity and want cocaine more. Whereas fluvox, fluoxetine, which is again Prozac, reduces the euphoric effect of consuming cocaine, which I can tell you uh, with certainty, and not about cocaine specifically, but I can tell you with certainty having used the SSRI for a long time, it does it, it reduce the amount that a dopaminergic drug can give you euphoria. Well, not in a not in a in a bad way though. In a protect in a, what I can only assume is a very protective way, because that extreme ex, uh, that euphoric element. This is a bit off topic, but that euphoric element is actually an overfiring of of uh, uh, an over signaling of dopamine between dopaminergic neurons, and that directly causes the dopaminergic neuron neural death. Not just dopaminergic, but neuronal death because of dopamine excitotoxicity that is associated with MDMA, with amphetamines, with cocaine, with all those things. So you don't really want that level of euphoria. So it's, and we'll talk later about neurodegenerative disease and you'll see how this is sort of protective. But the important thing is that, um, so it was shown that neuroadaptations in the serotonin system facilitate, like when someone first uses a drug, there's a response in the serotonin system and adaptations in the brain, in the serotonin system, facilitate the development of addictive behavior such that having a protective mechanism in serotonin already may prevent the development of addictive behavior. And finally, I wanted to mention that, you know, there are dopamine and norepinephrine inhibitors, I mean, reuptake inhibitors that are, so there are serotonin reuptake inhibitors that are pharmacologically available. There are norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. There are serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. There is one commonly available dopamine and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitor. There isn't one commonly available selective dopamine and serotonin reuptake inhibitor. But there is one in studies, which is called PAL-287, which probably should be produced. And it's being researched for the treatment of stimulant addicts because of this idea that serotonin moderates the, uh, or, or attenuates the effect of dopamine. And so this, this uh, molecule is a serotonin and dopamine reuptake inhibitor. And it's being thought of to be used for the treatment of uh, uh, stimulant addicts in recovery. So, I hope this, this was I hope this was quite interesting for you guys because basically this shows you another power of serotonin. So in the last video we talked about serotonin's role in resilience, impulsiveness, aggression, stuff like that, which you can see how powerful that would be as a performance enhancing drug in the long term in your career. Whereas in this video, we're talking about uh, a really powerful protective element of increasing serotonergic activity and specifically the use of SSRIs and dietary uh, tryptophan, which also would uh, carry over to a dietary 5-HTP, like if you supplement with 5-HTP, which is that it may inhibit, may protect you from the damage from addiction that's done to the brain. It may inhibit or at least attenuate the likelihood of you developing an addiction. And it may help someone who has an addiction of any kind, like such as porn or, uh, you know, I don't know, food of any kind. It may reduce the person's dependence on that uh, dopaminergic uh, hab ritual or habit that they have, whether that be an activity or a drug, whatever it be. So this is a really powerful way to enhance performance. And we'll continue to see that in the remaining episodes of this series, but we'll also discuss some of the dangers of increasing serotonergic activity. You know, I'm very uh, straightforward with you guys, and I'll 
talk to you about both sides of the uh, issue. But I think we're going to do another episode a little bit on how drugs affect serotonin briefly. I'll see you soon.